right. Okay, so what's up everyone? I'm here with Xavier Sanchez, one of my first mentees, and we're just gonna go over some stuff and, and let him talk about his experience as a whole with mentoring with me, without mentoring with me, just, just everything in general. So um, we started, at, I don't know how long we started ago, but before that, what were you doing before um, we met, before we started talking? In terms of like my agency? In terms of your agency or anything business-wise? Yeah, so I mean, I started with social media marketing, obviously. Um, I've been doing it for a while. I was kind of hopping from, I guess, mentor to mentor. And, you know, there was a lot of uh, Instagram gurus out there that are offering their courses, offering their, their mentorships, offering their script, their, you know, cold calling scripts, messaging scripts, door to door. They're, they're just selling their tactics. And, and I've been doing this for about, I guess, two years before I met you. And I was just kind of chasing my tail, trying to find a tactic that works. And obviously everything works, but I was trying something that I was trying to find something that worked for me. And I, I felt like I was just kind of lost in the whole process and just kind of overwhelmed by everything that was that that this niche has to offer, I guess you could say. Definitely, definitely for sure. I mean, I see that problem all the time. People just don't know where to go and what to do. So from there we started talking, um, um <laughs> When we started talking, you actually got on the mentorship. I'm actually trying to pull up. That's what I'm looking at right now to see when you joined. I give an exact date here, unless you know off the top of your head. Um, Looks like January second. January, yeah, I remember that. January second. So you 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 hopped on this January second. So it's been almost six months or so. I'd say I think. Um, doing my counting right, but so once you joined, what did you see as a difference? to you and compared to what you were doing and then what you're currently doing now or what the, that kind of transition. Yeah. So the main thing off the top of my head is, is the structure of everything and the fact that you were so, you were so in tune with being a teacher and a mentor and, and guiding me along the path. But mainly it was the structure that you had, even though you're new to even though you were new to, to being a mentor, you had a structure to things. You, you had, a step-by-step -step plan for me to go through to get to, to from where I am from where I was to where I wanted to be and you had that laid out for me um, obviously you didn't know where I was gonna go I didn't even know where I was gonna go from there but you had a strategy to it and I feel like that's the biggest thing with a lot of people now is that they are overwhelmed with a lot of things but if they have it laid out for them and say okay here's what you need to pay attention to not this, this is kind of irrelevant so don't, don't focus on that they can really hone in on what works and what will actually make an impact for their agency. And that's what you, that's what initially I saw right off the bat. hundred percent. And so with, with that, I guess, what were you thinking, I guess, bef before even joining, right? What were you thinking before joining and then now kind of looking back on it now, what were you maybe like rethinking that whole thought process if, if you had one? Yeah. So, I was thinking like I, I just needed help, man, because I remember I first met you through through, through what's his name? Jordan. Right. Yeah. And I hopped I mean he was first mentoring you, but I I kinda hopped on with what you guys were doing with the door to door, right? And that was just another tactic that I got drawn into. Not to say that it didn't work, but it was just something else that I was trying to do. Oh, yeah. And so um like I said, like before I was joining, I was, I, I sent you that one text. I was like, man, I'm lost. I, I've been doing this forever and I'm not getting any results, man. I, I just need someone to guide me. So I was just kind of in, in a real, like, like, what do I do now mentality? You know, like I know it works. I've seen it work. It's worked for you. It works for a lot of people, but why is this not working for me? And that's what my mentality was. And looking back at it now, it's like, I feel like I always knew the answer because I always preached on my story, on my Instagram, on any social media platform I had um, was to get a mentor because that expedites any process really to have someone guide you throughout the process and teach you one-on-one. -on -one. And I never did that. Yeah. I don't know why, but I never did that actually. And so looking back on it now, I wish I would have done it a lot earlier. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's definitely, I mean, 
easier said than done with everything. And then the, the same thing that I've been talking about a lot and telling a lot of people about just in general um, is the line. I even have it, I think, in my in my bio for Instagram and Facebook. It's in theory, practice and theory are the same thing, but in practice, they're not because it doesn't like people are like, oh, how do we do it? And they're just theory, and it's it's all across the U.S. It's all across the world. Just people theorize way too much. They don't actually do, even if it's something that's not working. It's better to do something that doesn't work than to not do anything and just theorize. But 100. percent And then so from there, you join the mentorship. I, I remember that exact day when you texted me. I think we we talked, and then you were actually going out to get um, a dental client. And then right now you mainly work with cosmetic dentists, and you have some other deals going on. But from from there, what were the main things that helped you propel you forward? Because I remember when we first started talking, like that day, I think you reached out to those old dentists that turned you down and you ended up closing them, I think like that, for, for a trial at least, like that day or that week or something. So it was very, very short. It was like that. And I was like, dang, that's awesome. So I guess from, from then in that trial, what was kind of the, the process and, and the systems that you felt helped you out a ton to get to where you are now we'll talk about it later where you have like a really big client across the world and you're getting deals like off and on all over the place yeah so one of the main things was, was trying something new on a consistent basis and that was the social media outreach the, the messages and the video messages and whatnot and like you said like I was, <laughs> whenever I was messaging them, I was like, y'all motherfuckers, I'm going to get you. And, <laughs> and literally first day of messaging, they ended up replying or they replied back the next day saying that they, they want to work. But the main thing was just being consistent at one, at one thing that not a lot of people are doing. You know, yeah. I, I hear a lot of people even now saying, Hey, like, what's your cold calling script? Hey, what, you know, what's your LinkedIn script? Like, what do you do for LinkedIn? What do you do for like, well, what was it? Um, indeed, like, like what, what? But they never mentioned social media outreach, and so that's probably a huge tactic that um, that when I started on with your mentorship, like whenever I started using it, I saw a big difference in in just responses alone. And I mean, me being a 17 year old, I I don't have a mode of transportation that I can just take and go door to door with. You know, of course, I have a phone that I can cold call with. But to be honest, I hate cold calling, you know, like even though I did do it at the beginning of the mentorship, because like you said, it builds confidence in, in your sales skills. I, I, it's just not something that would that. That is most effective. Oh, yeah. You know? And for me, at least, you know, I'm, you know, I would bang out cold calls and it would be that. Right? right. But these messages, it's something it's a different approach. You know, these businesses, well, what that, what these messages allow people to do or that specific tactic is it, it allows the owner of the business you're messaging to have a little bit of control. He can message back whenever he wants to or she, and they can look at it whenever they want. They can reply to it if not, but then you also see if they read it. So that gives you a lot of data for what to do next. But that, that mainly, it was that one tactic that really kind of, switched my whole mindset on, okay, there's something else out there that does work for me. And from there, what that did was boost my confidence a hundred percent because from being lost to, okay, there's still, there's still hope, you know? So that was, that was a huge thing. For sure. That makes, that makes, that makes perfect sense. Um, and so from, from sending those and, and being very consistent with the outreach and whatnot, not kind of on the flip side of things. Um, and because you were, you were involved with, like you said, you're doing social media marketing and whatnot for like two years before you met me. So you were obviously working on things. You knew certain things about like Facebook ads and how to bring results to business owners. You probably had a general idea of, of how to do it. And you probably did it once or twice before. I don't remember, but I guess, how do you feel about that aspect of things with the mentorship and maybe not just regarding the mentorship, but everything in general and what you learned from maybe the tactics and things you thought that would work. And now, you know, okay, here's what really works. Yeah. Well, it's funny. I posted about that kind of the other day on my story. Like, not a lot of things matter when it comes to life, and in this case, to social media marketing, not a lot of things matter. And with the mentorship, like I said, you hone down on the things that did. You know, I, I've I've done every outreach under the sun. I've done I've done everything. You know, probably not as consistent as I should have as I should have been, but 
I, you know, I've, I've tried everything. I've tried, <laughs> what was it? Uh, the, the BNI groups. Oh man, that's <laughs> BNI groups, man. Those are great. But, you know, I have closed deals here and there, obviously not consistently over the two years, but, or, or not, you know, uh, like one after the other one, I'd probably get one, one off deal and then a few free trials, but, um, <laughs> it, it, it's definitely the you definitely narrow it down from what I've been doing for the past two years you know I you <laughs> one thing also that that really got me was the fact that there, there's a lot of things when it comes to Facebook advertising that really don't matter in terms of delivering results right. and I feel like that's a big key as well because people are like okay I need to I need to learn this about Facebook I need like honestly there's only a little there's only probably a handful of things that matter when it comes to Facebook that actually would deliver results. And so honing in on those things made it very simple. Yeah, no, that, that, that's really, really true. I'm making a video to show people and it's like the 10 truths of like the online business world. And one of them is that like marketing doesn't matter because you're not gonna differentiate yourself with your marketing, the end all be all. So kind of leading off on that, yeah, I'm mentoring you for online advertising and building an online business and a social media marketing agency, maybe a little bit of a consulting business in there as well. Um, Cause again, you are consulting them and helping them grow. So what, what would you say are the other things that maybe we focus on together that aren't necessarily directly tied into marketing that maybe does make you stand out Then obviously marketing isn't the differentiator. So what do you think some of those things are for you specifically? Confidence. Number one, confidence in my, in my ability to talk to people in, in, in my ability to take control. I feel like that's the big one, being able to, to take control of any conversation, to realize that this business owner that I'm talking to is just another person. They're not anyone special. They, they are, they have, <laughs> it's funny because whenever you think of a business owner, you're like, oh crap, you know, I have to try to impress. I have to try to do this and that. And in a way you do in terms of what you know and how you can help them. But the moment I realized that they're just another person that opened up a lot of opportunities for me because that allowed me to take control of the conversation and lead whatever conversation I have with these business owners in the direction that I want. And that's the, the number one thing that I've gained from this mentorship is confidence in myself to not only sell, but to communicate what I'm trying to say effectively to where I make my point, whether it's trying to be to sell them, or to tell them about a new strategy, or if I already sold them to get them on board and get their whole, you know, their whole staff set up to help them grow as a, as a business owner and as a person as well. But I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have the confidence. And so I know it's kind of cliche too, like, oh, you helped me build a confidence. But I mean, it's the truth because you can't sell if you don't have confidence. You see a lot of people stuttering or you, you see a lot of people get frozen and, and, and the business owner ends up calling you out and you start sweating, you do, you know? So, but that's, that's, that's a huge factor. For sure. And, and I get that and I see that because two, two examples, one, and I'll interview him separately, but Cyril, he, and we were talking about this a little bit. I mean, he, and he'd even tell, he's told me this before. He's like, I came from not knowing like anything at all about anything. And now he's like, he has like hit four meetings yesterday. I got to see how he did, but it's just crazy. And then the other example, I remember when Joseph had a call, I think he was hanging out with you and you, you, and, and you went in and you said like the whole room was like on fire because he wasn't in control or something. It was so funny, but then he completely turned it around. And I remember one meeting, one of the first meetings you had with, when I taught you like the sales side of things and some of the script and just a whole bunch of other stuff you felt like so in control and I have everyone like I, I always, whenever someone's done with the call, I ask them like, how did you feel? It doesn't matter if you close them or not, like how in control were you? Because if you feel really in control of that next meeting, you're going to crush it. So do you have any like comments on that? Yeah, no, that's what I remember that. And that was the first dental trial that I got on with the one that turned me down before when I went door to door yeah. and I met them, they said yes. And then this wasn't even an on the phone meeting initially. Uh, whenever I closed them, I, I went to go do an onboarding meeting in person. And I, I, I literally felt like the CEO of the company, man. Like I walked in there, like I own the damn office, bro. And then I walked in and I sat him down and I was like, Hey, are you the receptionist? Okay. I need you to come here. <laughs> and then I brought him oh, into yeah. the office 
And I, I was like, okay, I need you to do this. I'm going to be delivering leads for these people. I need you to follow up with these guys. And I'm going to send you send you an email with instructions and whatnot. But it, that it allowed me to, because if I didn't have the confidence, what if I left a key important thing out because I was too shy to say it? Yep. You know what I mean? So I, I'd rather be upfront about it, set the bar, so that way everything will run a lot smoother. Definitely, 100%. And then, so with that confidence factor <clears throat> that you feel like I've helped you with, with, with all the different strategies and tactics, what do you feel with, with the confidence in there? What do you feel that that's pushed you to do more of, if, if that makes sense? Like if you, without the confidence, what have you not been able to, if, if you didn't have it, what would you have not been able to do? Probably have uh, a, a bigger mindset, you know, because when you have no confidence, you kind of feel like you're, you're in this like box, you know, like your, your, your potential is only so much, but the fact that I can close someone that's across the country or, or even in my hometown, or I can close someone who's been going to college for X amount of years to get a certain degree and I'm just a 17 year old fresh out of high school it allows me to open up my mind and expand a little bit and set my bar to a much higher point than if I would if I didn't definitely so now, yeah that's kinda, yeah for, for sure now touching on that has there been any I guess whether it's recently or just overall has there been any like lifestyle changes or, or anything directly that's like that's happened here with the mentorship or with your business growing that's directly inflicted your life, whether in a negative way or a positive way. I mean, mainly positive, but anything in general that has affected your lifestyle. It's, it's made me have um, a routine, you know, like, excuse me, made me have, it's making me set specific things to do during my day. It, it, it's kind of getting me into the whole business mentality rather than, okay, I close this deal. That's awesome. Let me go take this money and hopefully deliver results. It's, it, it has made me a lot more efficient in what I do in my day to day activities because it, it's making me more routine, I guess you could say. And negative wise, I don't know. Probably, probably not. I don't mean, if I, that's a good question, honestly, but this is negative um, off the top of my head. No, not really. I, I feel like it's becoming so routine that if I don't do it, something feels wrong. Yeah. Like if I don't do it because I choose to, or I just don't have time, I feel like, like my day is almost not complete. And I, I, I always try some, even sometimes if I don't, I always try to get like a message or two in or an outreach or two um, or do something for my business in the day. So that way I'm always somewhat, growing oh yeah i have i have a direct relation to that when i used to start going to the gym more and more i, I relate a lot of stuff to the gym but when i used to start going and i started like i forced myself to go every single day and then when that happened if i didn't go it feels so strange to not go the one day and i i get that 100 percent. and so i guess building off that lifestyle change of you being in a really really solid routine Let's talk about one of like your really, really recent deals that you closed. So you can just talk about that in your own experience and we can go from there. Which one? The one that I closed a couple days ago or the dental client? Um, the dental one. The big one. Okay. So the dental client. Oh, it's crazy. So obviously every tactic has their peaks and their downfalls or, you know, it, it's, it's like a heartbeat. You know, it goes up and down sometimes depending on what, you know, in this case, you know, I, I think it's like the time of the year, but. When I first started doing social media outreach, it was a peak. I was getting positive. I was getting meetings like crazy. You witnessed it. I was getting three, four meetings a week, closing trials left and right. But as it started to go down, I, I was like, okay, you know, I'm still doing it. I'm still getting responses. And then I switched over from Facebook messaging to Instagram messaging. And I ended up um, just search like the randomest thing. First time ever trying this because I remember you texting about it is searching up businesses through the hashtag search bar on Instagram. So searching up hashtags on there. And I typed in, uh, I think I, I just typed in like dentist or cosmetic dentist or something like that. Super general, you know, nowhere specific. And I was scrolling. I was, I was literally clicking on a business, seeing if they had a good presence and video messaging. Me. Oh, 
Wait a minute. Did you freeze? Okay. You yeah, froze. I froze for a second. Okay, keep okay. going. Yeah. So I, I was just I was just doing that over and over again. I'd probably message maybe 10 to 15 dentists. And then I came across this one dentist. I didn't even know they were in Jamaica. No freaking clue. They didn't have I didn't think they had their address on their bio or anything. But they looked like a solid solid place. They had like 3,000 followers on Instagram, which is pretty good. They only had like a handful of posts. So I was like, damn, they must you know, they must have a good, good authority in the area. So I messaged them, didn't think too much about it, went to the next people. And then I got a message from them. I remember I was with my girl this time. And then I looked at my phone and I got the message and I just kind of laughed and I put my phone down and went about my day and then messaged them back later on. They, and the message basically was that they're interested. That yeah, we'll give it a try. And I was like, that's awesome because this message didn't have anything to do with the free trial. I just said, I can deliver results. You know, here's what I can deliver. You know, let's try something. And so I ended up booking the call with the owner. The, the owner is the one that replied. I booked the call with the owner, hopped on the call, closed, <laughs> closed on the call. No objections at all. I, I mean, I probably answered all of her objections without even having her, without even having her state any objections. Just by I taking just her through that process, right? Yeah, exactly. So it was, it was, I guess I just laid it out very well for her. And I was able to connect with her on a personal basis as well. And so she, she saw the value in it and was able, I was able to close her right then and there on a $1,200 per month contract. And awesome. yeah, I, I thought the biggest problem was going to be the currency because she's in freaking Jamaica, you know? And I didn't realize that until I, until she responded to me and I looked at her, uh, I kind of looked her up a little bit and her website and whatnot. And I well, saw she's she was in Jamaica. Was, yeah, I was like, oh, crap. The first thing I thought literally was like in my head, I played out a scenario of me going to my family members. And I was like, yeah, I got a client in Jamaica. It's pretty cool. <laughs> and I I just played out these weird scenarios in my head. But I was like, man, the currency is going to suck because it's like 0.001 or something like that to the U.S. dollar. Yeah. But no, I guess she makes a lot of money. man. So Maybe so. Well, hey, I mean, so with that now, you've been working with her for – and. It was a weird situation where like nothing happened. I explain the situation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Explain the situation of what, what I'm talking about, what I'm thinking about and now what's happening like now, like what's happening right now and going on. Yeah. So, so I was super pumped to get started with this, with this client. Super pumped. You know, I, the, um, it's funny. I pitched her on Facebook advertising, but ended up ditching the whole Facebook and doing Instagram advertising. But uh, usually whenever I get a client on, bring them on board and I send them social media requirement, uh, through an email. So what do I need from them? What login info, what content, whatever, you know, I send her all of that through email. It took her a whole damn month. She paid me up front. She literally paid me the next day, $1,200 for the month to run ads. It took her a freaking month to, to, for her to send me the login info for her Instagram. She sent a bunch of stuff over the month, uh, like her content, you know, a couple of like um, access to her business manager, but she never gave me the login info for it because I had to set it up Yeah. Uh, on my end. It was like a weird scenario, but it took her a whole month. So she paid me for nothing, which is great because she didn't ask for a refund, <laughs> but that yeah, was- She paid you again just yesterday, yeah, right? She paid, yeah, she paid me again for, for this coming month because- um, like literally a couple of days before the, the next billing cycle, I started running ads for her. And I, I, I remember it was for one offer, but I ran like six ads for that one offer, testing different creatives and, and, um, and different placements. Yeah. So I did Instagram story ads and Instagram feed ads and for the same offer, just different placements, I guess you could say, and, and different videos and pictures, dude. Oh my God. She was more than happy to pay me because in like, what, four days or no, two, two complete days of running the ad, ad, or of having the active ads, I got like 330 leads in, in two days of running those ads. Um, and these are for a teeth whitening offer, 50% off teeth whitening, which in U.S. dollars converts to about $200 per lead, uh, uh, average value of each lead. So yeah. I was, she was blown out of the park. I wasn't even blown out. I, I didn't even expect that. So honestly, I was like, oh, that's cool. I, I'm looking here at the screenshot you sent me. I mean, one of, this, one of them, this was like very recently, uh, 14 leads for 27 cents a lead. 
eight leads for 50, 45 cents a lead, six leads for 55 cents, eight leads for 40 cents, 11 leads for 31 cents. Like you spent maybe like 36, nine, 12. You spent a little bit over like 15 bucks on just on looking at these. I don't know if you made any more, but like that, that's crazy. So that's really, really good. And so with that, then what, what do you have anything else to say about that? <laughs> I, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, it, it, I know it's going to be a very, very different experience because I understand the reason why that ad works so much is because it's probably her area. Yeah. But I, I'm super excited to see what this whole month has to offer because like you, like, you know, I had to turn off these ads because they were delivering so much and she needs to catch up on, on 311 leads or more. Yeah. 330, bro. 330, 330 leads. Yeah. yeah. And so she has to catch up on following up with them. So right now I'm just sitting ducks waiting for the next billing period. So we'll see. We'll see. That's but nice. I mean, she's happy. I mean, we're at like a 15% conversion right now. And that's with a cold audience too. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. So what, what systems would you say that I have taught you have you feel like have helped you? Obviously like the confidence factor, but maybe what systems, I mean, you, you, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, the specific systems and maybe processes that I've taught you, what, what, if you can name a few, what do you feel like has really helped and either, either separated me from other people or now separated you from other people? What would you, what would you say some of those systems tactics? The duplicable process that you have from outreaching to, to the actual starting, what a uh, starting results. Yeah. Yeah. Delivering results. Yeah. That whole process right there, people underestimate. They think it's easy. It's, they, they think it's easy as, you know, calling them, closing the deal, getting them started. But that is the whole process that sets the bar for however long you're going to work for the client. That's the most important part to me, to me, at least for me, for me, that's the most important part. Whenever I was, um, getting clients before or trying to get clients, I felt like I had to create a whole new process for every single client. And I was jumping around niches. So that wasn't easy. You know what I mean? So what you, what you did was made a duplicable structure that you can use for every single business and just tweak some things here and there that, that works. You it's step one, step two, step three, step four outreach, set the first meeting, set the second meeting, set the third meeting. And then you, you, it, I mean, it, considering yeah. you, them, you go on onboarding and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it, it's just super simple. And that's one of the main things that gets a lot of people. When I talk to them about the mentorship. They're like, Oh, I need structure like that. Because like I said, people are bombarded by a lot of things. And one of them is actually acquiring the client and what to do when you acquire them. Yeah. So, people you know, don't know what the hell to do. Yeah, yeah. So that's a huge process that helped me. The outreach, the discovery call, the closing call, the onboarding call, that structure right there has changed the the game. Changed the game, bro. And well not only that, but it also allowed me to get clients in a way that I can get clients. Because like I said, I I can't drive anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my I don't have any car, I don't you know. I don't even have insurance shit. And, <laughs> and so, and like I said, I don't like cold calling, but it, and it allows me to get clients anywhere, anywhere in the world, obviously freaking in Jamaica, bro. Yeah. And not only that, but it's, but, but allows me to communicate why they can trust me because yeah obviously getting someone in a different country or even in the next city over is kind of hard to do when they don't trust you because you're not in the area. Yeah. So that process not only lays out a step-by-step -step structure, but also within the structure um, lays out how to break that trust barrier. For sure. Definitely. So a few, a few last things, what would you say? So you, you started in January. Mm -hmm. literally like a few months, like literally like a while ago, but the same, same amount of time, like same day. So what would you say have the biggest changes been and the biggest obstacles been? And then off of that also, um, like the biggest successes that you've seen. And then this, that's a loaded one, but, um, 
then what would you say? Let, let's start with that. Let's start with that. From from starting to where you are now and where you want to go in the future, what would you say the biggest success has been, the biggest failures, and then from those failures, the biggest like learning experiences, and then where you want to go next, where you see yourself going next? Biggest success kind of generally is is the fact that like I, I can basically succeed when I want to now, I guess, in, in, in a way. Yeah. Um, you know what you have to do to succeed, and you know the, the processes to take, and although one part may fall out and you just do it again, you, you know, okay, since you've closed quite a few trials and you've closed quite a few paid clients and a few paid consultations and, and audits and all that good stuff, you know I, to do this, I'll get this, and after this is this, and you know the process. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I found the process that finally works for me. Yeah. And that was probably the biggest success is I found something that works for me. Yeah. Not just for anyone else, but for me in particular. So yeah. I have a case study that I can share with people to to help them out as well. Biggest yeah, I wouldn't say failure, the biggest lesson is probably um uh, even though I have a laid out plan in front of me or a laid out strategy on what to do, I still need consistency. Yeah. And, you know, yes, it works, but I find myself sometimes uh, that I'm getting lazy because I know it works and I could always do it the next day, you yeah. know? And, and sometimes that, that not overwhelms me, but sometimes I just kind of lose track a little bit. And so like the biggest lesson is you need to stay consistent no yeah. matter if I'm finding success or not. And even like it, it, it gets kind of worse whenever you get a client because you're like, oh, I have a client now. Fine, I can take a break. Reality yeah. is, you need that's how you lose momentum. Yeah. And so that's that's a that's one of the things that I've learned. For sure. And so kind of building off of that too, what would you say? Because obviously my mentorship focuses on both mindset as well as like the processes, tactics, strategy, all that good stuff. And I'm I'm keying in more on mindset as I've told you. What would you feel? mindset wise has helped you for either from the mentorship specifically or just in general as well yeah it's helped me understand that that with whatever tactic or strategy in terms of like actual like practical things like the ads or the marketing outreach none of that matters unless you can control your mind yeah obviously you know you can't you can't get a client unless you take control of the conversation you know you, you can't run an ad if, unless you know you know, how the customer would feel. So it all, it all comes back to psychology yeah. and, and what, what's going on in your head. And so that's the biggest thing that what, that's the biggest thing your mentorship made me realize is if I can't control my own mind and if I can't control my own emotions, then I'm not going to get anywhere. I'm going to be exactly the same as I was two and a half years ago and going. Yeah. So, uh, so that's the biggest thing as well. So I, I, I found that I, that, that's what I really liked about your mentorship. Whenever, you know, we would hop on our calls and you would stray completely away from like the practical ads part and, and outreach and follow up and whatnot. And you would just focus on the pillars of your mind. Yeah. And, and that helps me not only in, you know, like marketing and copywriting and all that good stuff, but also I can also implement it for my outside life, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So two last things. One, what do you like overall about, I mean, probably you could combine them, but what do you like overall about the mentorship? Like mainly, I guess, the structure side of things. I know you said, but like maybe like the day-to-day the -day and week-to-week -week things of how I structure things. What do you like about that? Maybe what do you not like about it? And then also just any, any final thoughts that you have regarding yeah, yeah. me, mentorship, just, just anything. It doesn't matter. So, so one of the main things, whenever people come up to me and they, they need help, you know, I always point them towards the mentorship. One of the key things that I always point out is that you're an active mentor. You're not like a lot of these other internet, social media gurus who get, get you on the mentorship and, and hypes it up for the first couple of days and then it just kind of dwindles down. You know, I always compare it to the, the engagement groups that you always get sucked into on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's real hype. Everyone's sending their pictures and whatnot. There's 30 people in there in the next week. And no one's sending their pictures. Nope. No one's commenting. No one's. It's like that's what I compare it to. That's what I um, contrast it to. I guess you could say. So I say you know, that that's what I compare it to because you're not that. You know, you're very active within the group. Like you, you send daily texts 
to see how all the mentors are doing, which I think is cool. So you're not only a mentor, but you're also an accountability coach as well in some sort of way. You know, we, um, we hop on the, the weekly group calls, even if, you know, some people can't make it, including me, I don't make it all the time. But the fact that you're putting yourself out there to do that for, even if one mentee shows up to teach them, you know, that, that speaks volumes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like I said, I find it so crazy that you haven't done this before. But the fact that you're staying consistent with it is super crazy because not a lot of people can can actually put in the work to do something like that. Yeah, so, thank you. Yeah, and like yesterday, I compared you to friggin' what's his name, the the Robert Kiyosaki's rich dad. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Right. I, can't, I compared you rich. You're like rich dad, man. Except I'm paying you. <laughs> That's the funny part. But yeah, I mean, you're you're super active, man. You you put in the work because you understand that you have something to share. You understand, you understand that you have knowledge that will help anyone and everyone who wants to learn. Yeah. So the, the fact that you have the passion to, to teach and to help people grow that shows in your, in your mentorship for sure. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So any, and if anything else, any other final thoughts, tips, advice for anyone else, just in general, Get a mentor, <laughs> get a freaking mentor. You know, forget about the courses, forget about the YouTube videos, forget, get a mentor, get someone who's been doing it. Even if you don't go with Nick, get someone who can teach you, who can guide you, who can, who can show you the path that they've been on. Yeah. That one. For sure. I agree with that. hundred percent. Get a mentor. I don't care if it's me or someone else. It doesn't matter because that at the end of the day, that that's what helps a lot. Um, well, thanks, man, for hopping on the call and, and sharing your, your thoughts and everything and how everything's been. You definitely had a lot of success and a lot of learning curves as well, but like you're, you're keep on chugging. You're, you're closing a lot of deals recently. You've been closing a lot of deals, trials. You've been learning a lot, you've been getting freaking awesome results for your clients. I, I'm, I can see now that this client right now that you have the $1,200 a month, it's going to be a consistent client if you keep on delivering those results, which I know you are. No, those results could last you three months. <laughs> Dude, that's what I'm saying, man. Like, I'm sitting ducks here. Yeah, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> well, thanks again. And um, every, everyone else, if you want to reach out to Xavier, go ahead and reach out to him. I'll put – this is going to go up on YouTube and probably a few other places. So I'll put your information below as well as my, my information. So if you want to reach out to either one of us, just reach out. Sounds good. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. <laughs>